Okay, so you may have heard that the scalar triple product of three vectors is related to the volume of a parallel pipette formed by those three vectors. We're going to look at a similar related result which can give us further geometric insight into the scalar triple product. There's quite a lot to unpack here, but the key idea is that we've got two vectors B and C which form a parallelogram. Then if we project these onto a plane here which has got normal A, then we look at the area of this shape of the projection of our parallelogram onto this red plane with normal A, then the area of this projection is going to be equal to the scalar triple product of A, B and C divided by the magnitude of A. So this gives us a way of interpreting the scalar triple product as being related to the area of the projection of a parallelogram in a certain direction. And if we take A to be a unit vector, then we can actually say that the area of this P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime is equal to the scalar triple product of A, B and C. So the first thing that we'll do is actually show that P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime, the projection of our parallelogram is itself a parallelogram. So the idea here is that we'll show that P prime, Q prime, this vector is parallel to S prime, R prime, this vector. Then you could use the same argument to show that P prime, S prime is parallel to Q prime, R prime. So we'll focus on just four points at a time. So if we start off, we've got P here, Q, and P prime and Q prime. The key idea here is that all four of these points actually lie in the same plane. So when you've got four points in 3D, they don't necessarily all lie in the same plane, but we can see that these ones will because we started with the line segment joining P to Q, we've just projected it downwards in the direction of A. So this is, we've got a line and then we've joined together lots of parallel lines. This is exactly how we could form a plane and all of these parallel lines are just in the direction of our A vector. And then similarly, we can say that R, S, R prime and S prime also all lie on a single plane. So this is going to be really useful now because we want to show that P prime Q prime is parallel to R prime S prime and we'll do this just by showing that P prime Q prime and S prime R prime both of these vectors are orthogonal to two distinct pairs of vectors. So we can say first of all that P prime Q prime because it lies in the red plane here it's going to be parallel so it's going to be orthogonal to the a vector just because it lies in this plane and this is the normal vector and similarly s prime r prime also lies in this plane so it's also orthogonal to our a vector now these two lie in different planes here but we can say that p prime q prime is going to be normal to whatever the normal is for this plane so now let's think about what the normal vector would be for this plane we've got c is this side here from p to q but then we've also got loads of lines which are formed and these go in the direction of A. So we can actually say then that P prime Q prime, because it lies in the second plane, this is going to be orthogonal to a normal vector to this plane, which we could actually say is just A cross C. Then if we have a look at RS, we know because we've chosen a parallelogram to begin with, we've also got a copy of C here, and then because we've projected this onto the same plane, we've projected this in the same direction, using the vector a. So similarly, because s prime r prime, this vector also lies in the second plane, we can say that this is orthogonal to a cross c, which is a normal vector for the second plane. So we've shown that p prime q prime and s prime r prime are both orthogonal to two different distinct pairs of vectors, which is good enough to say that they're parallel to each other. So then we can conclude that p prime s prime q prime r prime, they're both parallel to each other and similarly P prime Q prime and S prime R prime are both parallel to each other. So we have a parallelogram. So now we can start on our calculations. So we're going to be interested in the scalar triple product of A, B and C, but also of A with B prime and C prime. So we'll start off just by seeing how the vector B is related to the vector B prime and how the vector C is related to the vector C prime. So we start off with B and we've got B, the vector is the journey going from P to S. So we can write it as the vector PS like this. But then to go from P to S, it's equally valid in terms of vectors to go from P to P prime to S prime, then up to S. So we can write PS is going to be P P prime plus P prime S prime, and finally plus S prime S. And this is nice because our vector P prime S prime is actually just B prime. And you can spot as well that our P P prime and our S prime S are actually both vectors which go in the same direction as our vector A. So we can conclude that 
b is going to be equal to b prime plus two vectors which lie in the same direction, they go in the same direction as a. So it's going to be b prime plus some scalar multiple of our vector a. So lambda is just some real number there. And similarly, we can show that c is equal to c prime plus some other scalar multiple of a. So here mu is again just a real number. So we've got a nice expression for c in terms of c prime and similarly for b in terms of b prime, which is going to be really useful now when we evaluate scalar triple products. And the first step in finding the scalar triple product of a, b and c is we'll calculate b cross c. So b cross c, if we just replace these by our new expressions now, we can write this as b prime plus lambda a cross c prime plus mu a. And we can expand the brackets here with our cross products. So we'll get b prime cross c prime plus lambda a cross c prime. And we've also got a b prime cross mu a. So I'll write this as mu times b prime cross a. And finally, we get a lambda a cross mu a. So I'll write this as lambda mu times a cross a. So the first thing we should observe here is that when you do the cross product of one vector with itself, you just get zero. So this term disappears, which is nice. Then if we do the dot product of a with b cross c, we'll get a dot b cross c. This is now going to be equal to a dot all of this. So a dot b prime cross c prime plus lambda a cross c prime plus mu b prime cross a. We don't need to include this term because that one's zero. So now we can make use of the fact that if you have the dot product of a with something that's orthogonal to a, then you just get zero. So a dot b prime cross c prime, this isn't necessarily going to be zero, but you see lambda a cross c prime. a cross c prime is going to be orthogonal to a. So when we take the dot product of this term with a, we'll actually just get zero. And similarly here, b prime cross a is orthogonal to a, so the dot product of that with a also gives us zero. So then we can conclude that a dot b cross c is going to be equal to a dot b prime cross c prime. And now we know that the scalar triple product of a, b prime and c prime, at least the absolute value of this, is going to be the same as the volume of the parallelepiped formed by these three vectors. But this is a particularly interesting parallelepiped because the vector a is actually orthogonal to both b prime and c prime. So this isn't just a parallelepiped, it's actually a prism with a parallelogram face. So we can say that the volume of this is just going to be the area of the base times the height. So we can say that the volume is equal to, if I just write base times height, so the height is just the magnitude of the vector a. But then rearranging this, you can see that the area of the base is the volume divided by the magnitude of a. We know that the volume is going to be the scalar triple product of a, b prime, and c prime. So we know that this divided by the magnitude of a is going to be equal to the area of the parallelogram p prime, q prime, r prime, s prime. But then we know that the scalar triple product of a, b prime, and c prime is the same as the scalar triple product of a, b, and c. So we can conclude then that the area of the projection of our parallelogram onto this plane, so the area of p prime, q prime, r prime, s prime, is indeed equal to the absolute value of the scalar triple product of a, b, and c, and divided by the magnitude of a.